accepting Islam in Libya can be very dangerous for those who convert to Christianity or encourage others to do the same. With no central government to maintain law and order, Christians are at even greater risk of being imprisoned, kidnapped, and even killed. About 97% of the Libyan population are considered to be Muslims. Marina, not her real name, is a Libyan Christian from a Muslim background and knows the dangers that come with leaving Islam to follow Jesus. When one young lady's dad discovered she was a Christian, he beat his daughter many times and closed and locked the door. He didn't allow her to use the toilet. She was treated like an animal. She was beaten again and again. Another lady's Muslim husband divorced her when he found out she was a Christian. When her son was born, the husband wouldn't allow his son to have his name. So the boy won't be able to go to school or have an identity. She has suffered since she has become a Christian. The threats and attacks come not only from family, but the wider community, Islamic extremists, and government authorities who claim they are protecting Libyan and Islamic values in an attempt to get them to renounce their Christian faith. Omar, also not his real name, is a Christian who left Islam and is now living in Europe and is active in reaching Libyans with the message of God's love through his son Jesus. Persecution in Libya starts with families and society. Let me tell you a story about a brother. When he accepted Jesus into his life, he started to share his faith with his family, and they told the radical Muslims about it, and they were going to kill him as an infidel under Sharia law. He was put in jail, and the judge said he should be killed. Omar says in spite of the risks, many Christians like himself are sharing their faith in Libya, either in person or over social media and with mixed results. You can find many people are curious to understand and know and have good questions, but some say bad things about us and discussions go in a bad way. I share the word of God when I go there and my new life in Christ in very closed groups. I can't share with just anyone I'm not close to. Omar told me that one of the major obstacles to overcome when talking to Muslims about Christianity is they have a misunderstanding of what a true relationship in Jesus looks like. It's not easy to share with some of them, and they have a bad idea of Christianity. They think Christians drink too much and don't have ethics and can sleep with any woman. I don't know where they got these ideas and where they came from. So when I share, I have to face this reality. But I try to show them the Word of God and what it says. Another way that Muslims are encountering Jesus is through dreams and visions. And that's what happened to Marina. I was in a dark place in the first dream. I was scared. But suddenly I saw a hand take me up into a place of light. I didn't understand. Then I woke up and turned on the TV. On the TV there was a pastor and he said there was someone who was breaking out of a dark place into light. I felt peace and it explained my dream. Marina would have more dreams about Jesus and knew she needed to follow him in spite of the risks and dangers. Marina, who now lives in Europe, has a passion to see many Libyans give their lives to Jesus, which is why she often travels to her homeland, even though it can be very dangerous for her. As for Omar, he began asking questions about Islam when he was just a child, even though his family were all Muslims. I asked many questions about my faith. I was looking for someone to help me, and the answers I got never satisfied me. I had a curiosity, and I wanted to understand my faith. Omar says it was through a Christian television program on satellite where they talked about Islam, and that helped him get some answers to his many questions about his then religion. After answering the questions, they asked people to receive Jesus and pray. I would then turn off the TV. When opportunity to leave Libya, a country at that time that was under the authoritarian dictatorship and chaos of Muammar Gaddafi came in 2002, Omar also left for Europe. As he approached his mid-30s and many of his questions about Islam and Christianity answered, Omar made a decision that would change his life. After I received Christ as my Savior, this joy was in my life. I wanted to find a way to share that joy with my people back home. 
I know my wish, my dream, my prayer is to share this hope with my people. Both Omar and Marina are compelled to see people come to Jesus, but that decision comes with a cost. If they are growing in their faith and know that Jesus said they will be persecuted, they will resist giving up their faith under persecution. But those who are not growing will return to Islam. It's hard to know how many believers are in underground church. Through my connections and social media, I know of about 200 to 300 people who are gathering. We see the fruit in their lives, but some people disappear and we lose contact with them. But a few years later, they reappear using a different name. We don't know why. Maybe they were under persecution or a family situation. In spite of all the challenges and dangers, Marina and Omar want others to find the new life, peace and joy that they experienced in Jesus, and not only in Libya, but throughout North Africa and beyond.